morning. Uh, guten Morgen. Uh, let me tell you why I support the uh, Folgeld proposal, uh, which is quite different from Richard's view, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm referring to it as sovereign money. There's different names going around, so I'm not sure which the, the most appropriate name, but um, in any case, let me kind of take you through where I'm coming from. So, uh, unlike uh, Richard, what kind of Richard suggested, uh, I think that financial companies, whether you call them banks or shadow banks or credit unions or community banks, that the financial system is here to do one thing and one thing only, which is to intermediate. It's not to gamble with our money and leave us unemployed and in financial crisis periodically. Uh, it, it's really to um, bring together savers and investors and um, lenders and borrowers. It's to connect us. Uh, and I think what, what we saw is that that uh, function was undermined and has been undermined over the centuries by uh, leverage and opacity. These are the two major, major plagues of the financial system, major problems that need to be addressed. And I think the full gold, um, full gold proposal goes a, uh, a distance in moving us into a direction where we can overcome the two key problems, the core problems in the financial system as it now exists, which are leverage and opacity. So uh, I'm gonna give you a vision of a different financial system and I think Folgeld uh, having the ability, in effect, to have a, a, an account, a, a transactions account, with the central bank or in uh, or through a, a financial intermediary that's held fully in um, central bank reserves is just part of this bigger system that would eliminate these two problems. Again, uh, leverage and opacity. So um, the, the, the fiscal, the financial system to begin with is not here to gamble with our, with, with the financial connectivity system. We, we've got, the financial system is really a, a, a marketplace. It's a financial highway, I like to think about it that way. And uh, when you have a market, it's kind of a public good. Everybody gets to use it. Nobody can be excluded. It's a public good and you don't want to gamble with it. You don't want the people running the financial highway to be able to, uh, to collectively uh, st take positions which could go bad and then the system breaks down and then the government has to bail them out in order to keep their financial highway running. It's like our local uh, highways, we have gas stations along the local highways. Their intermediaries are inter intermediating intermediating between the drivers and the refineries, but we wouldn't let them all gamble, for example, that we wouldn't let them to sell, sell options on the price of gasoline so that they would somehow guarantee that the price of gasoline would never go above a certain level. If they all did that, they could collectively fail. If the price went too high, they could fail. Their businesses would shut down. They'd walk away from their gas pumps with the keys and then we'd have no highway system. And 10 minutes later, what the governments would do is to say that, look, if you're running a, a gas station, you're not allowed to gamble with it. You, you can only do one thing with your business, which is buy gasoline and sell it. You're running the, the highway system, you cannot gamble with the highway system. And if you wanna gamble on the price of gasoline, fine, do it on your own, out of your own personal money, but not out of your business and uh, on your own time, and uh, you cannot behave this way since you're running a public good. So I think we have to keep that front and center, that this is a public good, the financial system's a public good, and we need to do, uh, take steps to ensure its viability. Now, the, uh, the simplest way to do this is, again, is to get rid of leverage, and that means to have 100% equity financed financial intermediaries. And in our country, they, those are called equity-financed mutual funds. Uh, in my country, the, 
There's about 10, there's about 10,000 mutual funds in my com country. Right now about, I would say, 9,000 or so of those mutual funds are equity finance mutual funds. That's to say they take in money from the household sector and from some companies, and they issue equity in exchange, and then they take the money and they invest in different things, foreign stocks, domestic stocks, mortgages, uh, they invest in government bonds, long-term corporate bonds. There's 10,000 different mutual funds out there, and some of them invest in cash. There are things called cash mutual funds where they just hold cash. And that's what I think Full Geld is about, which is just having a way to, uh, to if you want to invest in something that just holds your money safely, uh, you just put it into a, a Full Geld uh, account, and it's held in cash, and the safest uh, depository of that would be the uh, central bank. So it's, in effect, having an account with the central bank that's... Uh, and you use that for transactions. You can use, you can write checks against your uh, cash mutual fund. You can uh, use a debit card, go to an ATM machine, and you have full transactions. Uh, and, and so the, the payment system never breaks down because it's perfectly safe. So we don't have any kinds of runs on the payment system. Uh, that, and we don't need to have an insurance uh, system of, uh, of the payment system that we now have in, in most countries. Uh, nor do, and we just saw back in uh, 2008, the mutual funds that were not 100% equity finance, the money market funds, were uh, the, the mutual money mar market funds were leveraged because they were promising to back the, uh, uh, the investments to the buck. And that was a form of leverage. And, as soon as they were not able to do that, the government had to come in and uh, insure overnight about $3 trillion worth of these money market accounts. And that was part of the financial crisis. But it had those money market accounts been invested just in cash or in securities, which were marked to market, we would not have had any crisis in the, in the uh, money market uh, system, which we did have. And since the Great uh, Recession, we've had legislation that's changed these money market accounts so that the large accounts are now marked to market. So there's no longer this, this um, uh, leverage where you're saying, give me my money, I'll g give me your money, I'll, g I'll pay it back for sure. You won't, in the, in the sense that you won't lose a, a penny on the, and any dollar that you contribute, your, your principal is guaranteed. Uh, that guarantee is no longer there. So it's much more of a, uh, it's a equity transaction, give me your money, I'll invest in, here's some shares, and if what I invest in goes down in value, you get the, you take the hit, not me. I'm, I'm the financial intermediary. I'm the gas station. I'm not going to go under. I have to stay in business to keep uh, the system rolling. Now, I wrote a book, if people are interested in this view, it's called Jimmy Stewart is Dead. I don't know how many people have seen It's a Wonderful Life. It stars Jimmy Stewart. It has this idyllic view of... Um, banking, and it, it operates with one really trusted person at the top named Jimmy Stewart, and he's able to talk people out of bank, running on his bank, just by the power of his speaking. But today we don't have Jimmy Stewart's uh, small bankers in small towns who know everybody. It's a whole different world. That's why I say he's dead, and uh, I didn't mean to insult his relatives or anything, or, but uh, but we need to think about a financial system that's very different from what we had in the past because uh, the past is no longer with us. Now, so the very simple way to run the entire financial system is mutual fund banking. I call it limited purpose banking, but let's, think of, let's use this other language which is more familiar, mutual fund banking, equity finance, mutual fund banking, and you can run every type of financial transaction through mutual funds with 100 uh, percent equity finance. If you're thinking about a CDS, a credit default swap, which is kind of an insurance arrangement on whether some security, some, some obligation will default, like a Greek government bond. So I can set up a mutual fund, a closed-end mutual fund, where I take in money from you folks. Some of you will, will bet that by the end of six months, the 
Greek government bond will default. Others of you will bet that it won't default. So there'll be the people betting on horse A and people betting on horse B. And I'll take in all your money and I'll keep it safe and uh, I won't do anything with it. I won't reinvest it. It's just there for safekeeping. I can invest it, keep it safe with the government, for example, in, the, in reserves. And then at the end of the six months, whoever wins uh, gets the pot less the fee. Now, this is called paramutual betting. It's been in place since, I think, 1837. It's, it happens every day in the racetracks around the world. And the money goes in. People bet on horse A, horse, horse B. The window closed. The money's right there. And at the end of the, ba the bet, uh, it, it's paid out. And that's uh, a market, insurance market, on whether or not the Greek bonds default. Because at the end of the bet is, whether, is six months, and we see whether or not the Greek bonds defaulted or not. So you can run a perfectly safe CDS market, and indeed any derivatives market. You can have bets like this on any on anything that are derived from something else. This one's derived from whether or not the Greek bonds default, but it could be derived on whether or not uh, GDP goes up in Germany by 10% or, you know, or not. Uh, whatever bet we're talking about can be run in a perfectly safe manner so that the, so the, the winners and losers in this, in this pool are right there. We're not requ we're relying, as AG, AIG did, on people outside of this pool to pay the winners of the pool, and that's exactly what AIG did. So I think we can get lost in some of the nitty-gritty details of what is money. Money's kind of mystical, what's credit, uh, what's not credit, uh, the balance sheets, but let's try and keep, get to the fundamentals here in my last three seconds, and there's a lot more slides which I can, I'll make available on my website that I'm not gonna have time to get through. But the fundamental thing is that uh, the financial system is here to intermediate. We have 10,000 mutual funds in the US. They're doing lots of intermediation. They account for about a third of the financial system. All I'm saying is if we went to 100% equity financed mutual funds, not 30% or 33% to 100%, we would not have seen a financial crisis in the US in 2008 because not one of the equity financed mutual fund companies got into any trouble whatsoever. Not one of them had to be bailed out. So we had a financial crisis. We had a lot of financial entities uh, built out of straw, and some were built out of brick. And this big wind came and blew down the ones built out of straw. And what did we do uh, in order to fix the system, to rebuild the system? We rebuilt the system out of straw. Well, I think it's time to rebuild it out of brick, and I think Folgeld is setting up, in effect, a cash mutual fund system. So part of what it's doing is securing our transaction system so that we can forget about that and then think about the rest of the system, which is uh, how do you make sure that the rest of intermediation occurs with no leverage and also with full transparency? Because a big part of the crisis here was that because of the leverage, uh, these intermediaries, these banks, were at risk of a run, of people not refinancing them. It wasn't so much a run on deposits, but it was a run on repo. And, and rumors started to circulate that Bear Stearns had a lot of bad loans, wire loans, more, uh, ninja mortgages. And overnight, people got nervous and they stopped refinancing Bear Stearns, and within three days it was under. That can happen today. So. It cannot happen in a world where you have equity financed because nobody can run because they're running on their own money. They, they, they're not owed anything for sure. And secondly, if you have a government agency that replaces the Angelo Mozillos who was running Countrywide Financial to verify and disclose the financial assets that the, that the, financial, that the um, mutual fund is, is hold, has, has purchased to verify them in real time whether uh, Uli has a decent credit rating still, or whether he's lost his job, or whether his house has this value. That can all be done electronically in real time. Then, then, then uh, the uh, shares in this closed-end mutual fund that's holding his mortgage become very liquid. So we can have much more liquidity when we have transparency. So no debt, 
Equity finance, transparency, that's all you need uh, to fix this financial system. So I think full geld, I hope it passes. I would vote for it uh, as a Swiss citizen. But once you have that passed, you need to have another referendum that pushes limited uh, that for uh, limited purpose banking, and you need to approve that. And then this country's financial system will be safe from forever on against financial crises, financial collapse, all the unemployment, all the misery that was caused by this, all the redistribution, and the Swiss model will become the model for the world and take over. Because as uh, we just heard, one idea can change the world for the good, and I think this is the idea of the day.